Amid heightened tension along the border, India warned Pakistan of effective and forceful response to unprovoked firing and cross-border terrorism. Briefing the media after a high-level meet shared by Home Minister Rajnath Singh, Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar said India remains committed to peace and tranquility, but will give a befitting reply in case of unprovoked firing and infiltration bids. Pak has resorted to firing along the international border and the LOC through Wednesday and Thursday. Responding to Park allegations of India violating its airspace using a spy drone, Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar said the picture of a drone in question shows it is not of Indian design or available in Indian Armed Forces inventories, adding that the drone appeared to be of Chinese design. In a major decision, the cabinet gave its nod to foreign investment composite caps, which would club together foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment and investments by non-resident Indians. The proposal is aimed at simplification of the FDI policy with a view to attracting foreign investments and also improving ease of doing business in India. Among other decisions, the cabinet approved spending of over Rs 8,500 crores on multi-state power transmission system. It also gave its nod to development of the sixth laning of Eastern Peripheral Expressway and redevelopment of 400 railway stations across the country. The cabinet also sanctioned Rs 700 crores of additional funds for recapitalization of regional rural banks. The cabinet also gave its approval for forming an expert group to classify the caste names return in the Socio-Economic and Caste Census 2011. The group will be headed by Neeti Ayog, Vice Chairperson Arvind Panagarya. Ahead of the monsoon session of Parliament, beginning on Tuesday next week, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkai Naidu reviewed the status in respect of legislative proposals made by different ministries. Eight new bills, including the Road Transport and Safety Bill 2015, will be introduced during the monsoon session. Eleven pending bills will also be taken up for consideration. The first meeting of the India-Myanmar Joint Consultative Commission was held in New Delhi to take stock of the overall bilateral ties besides identifying areas for further stepping up engagement. The meeting was co-chaired by External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and a Myanmarese counterpart, U Wunam Wong Luing. Exhorting the Indian private sector to tap into the huge opportunities in the naval defence sector, Navy Chief Admiral R.K. Dhawan said the force has prepared a 15-year indigenization plan that will soon be shared with India Inc. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear the CBI's plea on Monday seeking a direction to the SIT to keep filing charge sheets in Vyapam scam cases. In its plea, the CBI had contended that the transfer of more than 185 Vyapam cases to it will take time and the accused should not get statutory bail on account of the charge sheet not being filed. Meanwhile, the CBI has so far registered five FIRs since taking over the case on the 9th of July. The Allahabad High Court ordered a CBI probe into alleged corruption by Noida Chief Engineer Yadav Singh on a PIL, accusing him of amassing property disproportionate to his known sources of income. The Lucknow bench of the High Court passed the order on a PIL by social activist Nutan Thakur. A day after a hike in VAT rates on petrol and diesel in Delhi, the BJP and the Congress have accused the AAP government of cheating and betrayal as they staged separate protests in the city. Delhi BJP chief Satish Upadhyay said the AAP government's justification to hike the rates did not have any basis as Kejriwal was spending hundreds of crores for self-glorification. Sounding the bugle for the upcoming Bihar Assembly polls, BJP President Amit Shah launched the party's campaign in the state by rolling out 160 ruts. Amit Shah charged Nitish Kumar with backstabbing the mandate of the people given to the NDA in the 2010 elections by joining hands with arch-rival Lalu Prasad for the sake of power. The Department of Telecommunications has released the Net Neutrality Report. The panel led by A.K. Bhargav has recommended core principles of the net neutrality to be adhered to. The panel report has said user right on the internet needs to be ensured so that telecom and internet service providers do not restrict the ability of the user to receive or share data. In international news, Eurozone ministers have agreed to give Greece a 7 billion euro bridging loan from an EU-wide fund to keep its finances afloat until a bailout is approved. The loan is expected to be confirmed on Friday by all EU member states. In another development, the European Central Bank has agreed to increase emergency funding to Greece for the first time since it was frozen in June. The decisions were made after Greek MPs passed tough reforms as part of a Eurozone bailout deal. France has foiled a terrorist plot to capture and decapitate a member of its armed forces, underscoring the threat the country faces six months after Islamist attacks in Paris. 
The Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve has said security forces had staged dawn raids on Monday to take into custody four people who were planning to commit a terrorist act against French military installations.